mean, we're the favourites, but we were the favourites in the Kakashi Cordina fight, and that didn't go our way. So it's a tough fight for Chev. You know, I think he's the favourite in the fight. I expect him to win, but Elisaro can fight. And, you know, I know he, he got stopped by Jai Apatai, but you know, this is a British title fight, and it's going to be a fantastic fight. What's about in uh, Jack Catterall in this one? How do you see it going? Uh, I think it's a very tough fight. You know, I think it'll be a different kind of fight this time. You know, you heard a little bit from Joe McAnally's comments and, and other people's comments that, you know, I think um, he's going to start a lot faster, Josh Taylor. And Jack Cattrall says he believes he's going to stop um, Josh Taylor within around seven to nine. So I expect it to be a different kind of fight. If it does go to points, it's going to be very close. But, uh, you know, expecting to see a, a much better fight this time around. Yeah, a lot of the narrative around this fight has been around the weight for Josh Taylor, but heard a couple of rumblings that Jack maybe be a bit tight. You confident both men make 140 pounds? I mean, I, I haven't been in camp with him, but he doesn't look tight at all. You know, he looks nice and strong. He's never struggled at 140, so, you know, with the elongated camp, I don't expect that to be an issue at all. Josh looks, you know, pretty close to the number as well, but it's always a, a, a mission for these guys to make 140. But I expect both guys to be on the numbers tomorrow. You hate to condemn anyone to retirement, but would you agree it's difficult to see where the loser on Saturday night goes? Yeah, I think that you know when people talk about careers on the line, yeah, both guys could carry on fighting for five years, but not at the level they want to be at. And the loser of this fight will be a long way away from fighting for the world championship and a long way away from fighting for world championships. So, sorry, or being in big fights. So, I think the loser has a long way to go. On Saturday night, and uh, both know how important victory is. And it's been it's been a few days since you were in Riyadh for the fight of the year, really. Fury versus Usyk. What did you make of it? And do you see more of the same in the rematch? Is Usyk coming out on top again? Yeah, I thought it was a tremendous fight. I mean, I think everyone scored it a little bit differently. Like I had Fury in control after six rounds. Not everyone did. Um, and then obviously for me, Usyk dominated the fight on the back end. Um, I thought it was an incredible performance. I thought both guys boxed very, very well. But obviously Usyk did that something special. The ninth round was thrilling. Could it have been stopped? Maybe, maybe not. But, you know, for me, it was just a great spectacle of heavyweight boxing. You know, a, a great example of the elite level of the sport and how great the sport can be. And I think both guys deserve a lot of credit. You know, I said yesterday, we, we called them ha-ha merchants. Like, we, we sometimes enjoy seeing people get beat, where really we should be congratulating them and thanking them for, for putting up a great fight. You know, Josh talked about that UFC model where when the top fighters in the UFC lose, it's really not a big deal mm. at all. And we want to see more of that in boxing. Say if it was more of the same next time and Usyk was to win, we don't want to see the door shut on Fury versus Joshua. Do you think that it would be shut or it wouldn't be? Um, no, I think that that fight will always be there, but it's just the size of the fight and how that might change. I mean. You know, if that fight's for undisputed, you know, if Fury is to beat Usyk in a rematch and then fight Joshua, it's a massive fight. If Fury was to lose to Usyk in a rematch and fight Joshua, it's still a huge fight, just not quite as big. But you know, I think you're right. I don't think we should worry about losing. And that's the same with Josh and Jack. Just go in there, give the crowd a great fight. And then if you do lose, you, know, you, you can be guaranteed another opportunity. And you know, look at Tyson Fury. Stock hasn't really dropped in that fight. If anything, it's gone up and he got beat. And Joshua's trajectory, obviously, if Fury was to lose the rematch against Usyk, he'd have his heart set on the trilogy fight with Usyk, wouldn't he? Would you say that? Yeah, he likes that fight, and Ben Davison and those those guys like the fight as well. But you know, obviously, commercially, Fury is a huge fight. But it's more about trying to capture the world championship again. You know, he wants to become a three-time world champion, and whoever's got the belt, he's willing to face. Yeah, let's think about Fury, Usyk. Obviously, round nine was disastrous for Tyson Fury. Seemed to get buzzed a couple of times earlier in the fight by Alexander Usyk as well. Seen a lot of people online saying his punch resistance might have left him. Do you agree with that, or is that slightly harsh? I don't think it's left him, but I don't think it might be what it once was. You know, I think that happens a lot when you've been in tough fights and you've been dropped and you get a little bit older as well. But, you know, they're heavyweights, you know. For, for me, you know, until that moment, you know, it was the shot in the eighth round that, that bloodied his nose, but it was really the ninth where he, he was gone. And, you know, Usyk is not a massive puncher. You know, he didn't really have AJ in big trouble. It's more of a tiredness in the twelfth round from AJ, but, you know, he, he's not a massive puncher, but obviously he hit him clean on the jaw. It's more how he tires you out, you know, so he was making Fury think the whole fight. He was wearing him out. And as you get tired, your punch resistance probably won't be the same. So, but yeah, I think there's definitely an argument that he may not, have the punch resistance he once did but you know these guys 
big, strong guys and punch hard. Sticking with the potential AJ fight, is there a danger now we have sort of missed the boat on that? It's difficult to see it big and as big as it could have been. No, no, I mean, if he wins the rematch, it's bigger than it's ever been. But, you know, if he was to lose again, certainly it wouldn't be at the same magnitude. Would a trilogy not be more likely if Fury was to win the rematch? Possibly. Who knows? Anything's possible. Maybe yeah. there isn't even a rematch. Eddie, just a quick one for myself. Aside from this magnitude, if there is a draw, where does that be caused by this video? We don't want to see a draw, so don't start that. But um, I think if the fight goes 12 rounds, then it's going to be close. You know, there's no doubt about that. But, you know, hopefully we get a clear winner on Saturday night. And one way or the other, we can draw a line through it. Maybe there's a trilogy if it's an incredible fight. But let's see what happens Saturday. Uh, in, in regards to next week as well, five and five, obviously your captain is Deontay Wilder. How, how's the relationship being with him? Any WhatsApp messages, exchanges? No, not really. I mean, obviously, we caught up at the press conference, and I'm looking forward to seeing him on, on Monday. Um, he looks great in the training camp, and I think if we can inject that belief into him, I think he's going to put a great performance. You know, he's our captain. We've got double points, so we need him to win that fight. If he can win it by knockout, I think we win. We're pretty much guaranteed to win the whole thing by that point, so it's going to be a lot riding on that main fight. And could you potentially have a 5 5 for sure, yeah, we're already talking about that. I mean, you know, last week we had Kakachi against Cordina. Obviously, um, tomorrow night we've got, a, sorry, Saturday night we've got Chev Clark, um, also against Zorro. Then we've got the 5v5. We've just done a deal for Shabazz Massoud um, to fight Liam Davis as well. So, you yeah, know, these are all tremendous fights, and, and we're talking all the time. Just Cordina catching it, and away What's the thoughts on? Yeah, look, you know, maybe his alpha looks for a shot for, for Kakachi. Kakachi has a mandatory, which is our fighter, Sugar Nunes, the Mexican who just beat Rakimov. Very, very good fighter. Um, and, you know, he, he did very well, Kakachi. I expected Joe to win the fight. I don't think he boxed fantastically well. But I think he needs to move to 135, and that will definitely be next for Joe. Eddie, Eddie do you think that uh, Zoro is a top of five for Chef Clark than Isaac Chamberlain would have been? We'll know on Saturday night. I mean, I think that they're similar kind of levels. I haven't seen enough of Zorro. I know he's a talented fighter. Obviously, he got stopped by Jaya Patai, which is not you know, a disgrace by any means. Um, but I expect a good fight. You know, this is a, a, a Lonsdale belt clash in the cruiserweight division and, and two very good fighters. Yeah, a quick word on uh, Joe Joyce, Derek Chisora. A lot of people online sort of cringing at the thought of seeing Derek Chisora in the boxing ring again. Do you think that's fair? Well, what I'd say is I think certain fights you wouldn't want to see him in. But Joe Joyce is a fight that stylistically is, is not the end of the world for Derek Chisora. You know, he's a slow heavyweight. Um, he can punch for sure. They all can, but he's not a, a sharp one-punch knockout specialist. So in that respect, I think it's a better fight for Derek than fighting a, a young, fresh guy who likes to move and, you know, he's a huge one-punch knockout artist. So you know, Derek's going to do what he's going to do, but I think style-wise, it's, it's not the worst matchup that can be made for him. When's the last time you spoke to Ryan Garcia? How's things there? Saw him in Saudi, you know. It's just bizarre. You know, one minute he's saying he's going to punch me, and then next he's asking for selfies and saying, let's squash the beef. Like, you know, I've told him. I, I don't know how many times I've got to say, I hope you're innocent, but you've still got to go through the process. And obviously, we'll see what happens with a B sample coming up. Just announced uh, Fisher Babbage. Yeah. Uh, you've just won the first bit for Dalton Smith as mm. well. Um, just talk to me about the back end of this year. I was at oh, well, the summer. Yeah, exciting. Beyond. Yeah, I want to make the big fights. I mean, Fisher Babbage has gone down so well. Like, huge fight at the Copper Box. It's a, a great fight. Dalton Smith, you know, he wants to win that European title as well. Hopefully, we can make Wood Warrington as well. You know, we're constantly looking to try and bring those big fights to Britain. Fighters do want to fight internationally. And we can do that with them in America and in Saudi. But at the same time, we've got to make the big fights happen in Britain, and, and we continue to do that. And you know, it'll be a huge crowd for Fisher Babbage on July 6th. Last one. Just a quick one for myself. Um, in terms of fighters, there was a fighter in the name of Shakur Stevenson. Mm. On his final fight, a contract with Top Rank. Is that someone that you would look at explore working with in 2024, 2025? Yeah, for sure. You know, when Shakur, or if Shakur comes up as a free agent, we'd definitely like to talk to him. He's one of my favourite fighters. I think he's a tremendous talent. Um, but we've got to be able to deliver the fights for him. So if that opportunity arises, I'm sure we'll talk. Perfect, thank you. All right. Thank you. Cheers, boys.